A good coaching session is built upon foundations of core elements. These would be establishing the learning outcomes, making sure you create a positive coaching environment, sessions are creative, lots of new ideas, people are engaged, active, it's enjoyable. At the end of it, we can reflect upon what we've done and what success we've gained from that session. The purpose of this exercise is to look at uh, the de defensive structure and how to apply pressure in field hockey, looking at the performers' body position and their stick position. We're going to look at hockey and defending in hockey um, and how to apply pressure. Um, it's going to be quite good because we want to do it without a ball, we don't even need a ball to do it. First off, we're going to get into this badminton court. We're going to play bibs versus non bibs, just end zone. So the zones will be the two tram lines, either end. Um, netball rules, so no moving once you've got the ball. Alright, now we can start. What do we recognise about playing with pressure, how to add pressure? If we look, there was a really good one where Josh was up here in the corner and sort of Jack was, well, Jack was marking him, but it was about this far away from him. In a game, in hockey, um, if we're this far away from somebody, like, how much pressure do you think they're under? Not really. Yeah, so you're probably quite happy if someone's going to stand that far away from you, sort of, you just, you've got the whole pitch open, you can pass it to anybody you like. Um, if we get really, really close, then it makes it harder. Like down in this corner here, where Mike had the ball and James was right next to him, it makes it so much harder to pass and look for those routes. Because suddenly, when you're this close, all your options are open and you're primarily thinking about him not getting the ball off you. Okay, if we grab a stick each. To make a session really engaging and to ensure that everybody is involved, everyone has a ball if there's enough ball, if there's enough a racket, if there are enough rackets to go around. There's plenty of activity, very few periods when people aren't doing things. The minute you set a session apart where there is active and inactive, people tend to switch off. So how can you get everybody involved? If everyone's engaged and everyone's learning, you've got a really active session and it links back to the enjoyment. If we're active and we're active in something we enjoy, then we're learning as well. Start back on the green cones, so green cones for go, red cones for stop. As we approach somebody, so somebody's going to be these red cones, we'll get there, we'll chop our feet so our side gets smaller, so it acts as a break, and we get our left hand low, two hands on the stick, Charlie, yeah, nice Charlie. Excellent. Right, this time, if the bibs, if you drop your sticks and if you stand behind a pair of red cones each. So this time, you've got something to go around and to go up against. You've actually got a shoulder now to go against. People in red, as they approach you, at the end, we're going to stop. We'll want one strength and one weakness of each of them. So something that they've done well, something to improve on for every single player. We'll go strength for each of them. Yeah. Cool. And a weakness for each of them individually. Yeah. So almost, almost there. So like there rather than there. Yeah. So a little bit lower. The best coach advice I've ever been given is to be as creative and imaginative as I possibly can, um, and to look at why we're doing things and to not back down or trying something new, and just remaining positive and confident in in my decisions. One of the positive aspects of this session is the clear instruction given by the coach throughout. 